Hey everyone, welcome back to our final lesson in the Image Gallery project. This is lesson 12, and this is where we will publish our work to the internet. So we are going to give this project its own web address, its own URL. And we are going to use something called GitHub Pages to do that. So this is basically going to be a utility video on how to publish your website using GitHub and GitHub Pages, but it's also going to culminate the Image Gallery project. So let's make sure our workflow is set up as always. So on the screen right now, I have my GitHub repo for the Image Gallery. Make sure you have yours open. Then we want to have the integrated development environment open and two files open, index.html and styles.css. We want to show the folder structure over here and we also want to slide up our terminal just a bit because we are going to be working in the terminal with some command line interface direct to our server in the cloud with AWS. So that will be required in this step. Uh, and let's see, let's f just get a picture of where we left off. So. Uh, I'm just going to click save if I haven't. I probably did that already, but on index.html, that is the open file. Click preview and preview that file. And well, I probably moved that up a little too soon. So let me bring that back down, slide over the preview just a little bit. And there's our mobile design. And we've seen this many times now. And there's our nine photos. So we are set to go. Let's expand that into the pop-out window and this is viewed on a big screen with three across as design I want you to take a close look up in the actual URL here notice what's in the web address this is you see some reference to us east one dot Amazon AWS dot com and that basically is the web address for the server that we are renting with AWS. So this is not the web address that we want to publish the site with. This is basically as if you had your home computer and you were accessing the hard drive on that computer. So this is accessing the hard drive of the computer we're renting in the cloud. So we wanna make sure that we have that distinction clear. And knowing that, now let's head on back to our repository. So. A couple of things here first as we move on. This is, um, if you're not one of my students, uh, a little background here. This is the first project of our entry level CS Foundations course for my high school students. Uh, this is prior to any advanced placement classes, and this is meant to give them a flavor for HTML um, projects with vanilla HTML, CSS, and eventually JavaScript. So it's very beginner-centered. Um, because of that, we took our time through a c many different key concepts and scrolling down in the readme, here are some of them. Basic HTML tags, intro to, to styles, box model, flexbox. We covered a lot in this one project. And I tended to go a little slower and show you where to get the resources. It was not meant to be a full on deep dive into every subject, but it was an awareness of how to bring that subject into this project, but also more importantly, where to get the resources if you want to expand that concept in your own project. And what I have found as a self learner is development is more is not about memorization. It's about knowing where to get the documentation, working on projects, and so this is a project-based course. So what am I rambling on about here? We may pick up the pace in future projects on these key concepts. In other words, we may not do, um, we may not go as slow with Flexbox anymore. I'll give you reminders. I'll remind you where to go. Box models, same thing, give you reminders on where to go, but we won't do the complete introduction, if you will. Um, because it'll be other issues that we want to be introducing our students to, so or to you to. So that's kind of the concept here. This is our first, took 12 lessons, but I think we're in great shape. All right, so 
Another piece I'd like you to look at, and you've probably heard me say this along the way, so my students are very well aware of this. If you go to the MD file, project specs, and we have, this is broken down into three different sections, general specifications, administrative, and time in classroom, and then the rubrics down below. Take a look at the administrative specifications. Um, this repo must be cloned to and all work done on AWS Cloud9. So I'm expecting my students to do that. And then your work should be frequently pushed to your GitHub repo. So if we haven't done that, and again, this is part of admin. And if you go down for my students, that is 20% of your grade for this walkthrough. So make sure at the, and this is going forward for any walkthrough project, Make sure anytime you're stopping work, you're taking that work on Cloud9 and pushing it to GitHub. We are going to do a quick walkthrough again to make that happen here. So let's go back to our main page. If you recall, we have a prior utility video that walks you through that, but let's open up another tab in GitHub and we want to get a personal access token. So I'm going to pull down my profile, go to settings. Um, and again, I'm going to go a little faster here because we have a detailed walkthrough here. And on the left-hand side now, I'm going to find developer settings. And we want personal access token. And I'm going to hit generate token. It will ask you to confirm that this is you. This is the authorization. Uh, hopefully, I remembered my password. Okay. So now the note. Um, this is for you. So I'm just going to type in image gallery project expiration 90 days and the most important part here is select the scope for the repo and all that go with it head on down to the bottom and hit generate token and again the token is right here and we could put it in the clipboard eventually you could also copy and save this in a google doc or somewhere else and you could use it for the 90 days all right so that's ready to go Let's walk through our push to GitHub procedure one more time. So I'm going to close out. I'm now back on the Cloud9 IDE. I'm going to move up my environment, my uh, terminal, excuse me. And now remember environment, this folder. So whenever you see that forward slash and then the blue reference, that's a reference to a folder, a directory for old schoolers like myself. And the name of that environment is really what we named the entire Cloud9 setup at the very beginning. So that's the root directory. Every project will have its own folder off of that if we do this right, and that's the intention. So what I want to do before we go any further is I want to make sure that I am referencing that project. So I'm going to hit or type in change directory, CD, and then space and then begin the typing of the folder. There's nothing else here, so if I just hit tab, that hotkey fills it in for me There's because it's all unique. I hit enter, and a couple of things should pop up. Number one, now we've got root directory, back forward slash, and now we're in the project folder. Notice the parentheses with main. That's referencing to, hey, you already have cloned the GitHub repo down to this local environment. So we have a copy of the repo on AWS. What we want to do is make sure that this is syncing up with GitHub. So that's why you see main. And if we happen to do a LS, a list of all the assets in this project, you will see that we have the blue is an asset folder. Then we have files index.html. We have the project specs MD, the readme MD, and styles.css. So Everything is there from the project, so I'm going to just clear this out. So we're dealing in the right folder, so I can't say that enough. Make sure that you are in the right folder. That's where the errors happen if you are just doing this off of the root. Now, for the rest of the way, it's going to be git commands. So git is the actual technology version control. GitHub is the user interface that kind of is the wrapper around the git technology. and the command that we want to start with is git status. And right now you should see I have in red 
the two files, index.html and style.css, that says, hey, since your last work, you haven't updated the local repo, let alone GitHub. So what we want to do is we want to hit, uh, and let me clear this off first so you can see. Now we're going to run git, and I can't spell git, git add space dash a. Now what this is doing is adding those two files to a staging area to be prepared to be committed and pushed up or photographed, if you will. We'll talk about that in a minute. I could just simply put git add and then the names of the files, but dash a is kind of what I do because it gets all files that need to be done. So when you get the prompt back, no errors happen, so we can hit or run git status again and see now that those files are green. It is in the staging area. So they're prepared for what's called a commit. Git commit space dash M and now open quotes. And what's happening here is basically the Git technology is taking a photograph at this point in time of, of all of the work we've done. And it stores, every time you do a commit, it doesn't overwrite the previous commit, it stores it on top and it keeps a running version history, hence version control. Um, so this is critical and what I'm about to put in next is even is very important. You need to be very specific in your commit messages. Don't just put update project. What are we doing here? So prepare project for publishing with GitHub pages. I want to close quotes and hit enter. And now two files have changed. Let's run git status again. And it is telling me here on the bra your branch is ahead of origin main. So right now we have updated the local repository and we want to now update the remote or GitHub. So we have one last thing to do, git push origin main. So gets the technology pushes the command origin means, hey, you've already linked these two together. So use the original uh, URL or web address for this and please connect to the main branch. And you could this is you could change branches if we do in the future. Right now we're using everything off of the main. So we hit enter here. It's going to ask us for our to authenticate that. Wait a minute. It's saying, hey, you're now asking AWS to access your or someone's GitHub account. So put in your password for GitHub. And now I'm putting your username for, for GitHub. I, uh, but now the password is where we will go back to that personal access token. Copy that in our clipboard, paste it here and hit enter. And now we've updated both local and remote. So one final way to check this is come on back to the, your GitHub repo and refresh. And now you should see prepare project for publishing. Those two files are up to date. Okay. Now this is important because we are going to be publishing the website. I mean, we're publishing this project off of this file and not AWS. So that's our next step. It's very easy, but a couple of things that I want to point out to do here is you want to make sure that, um, well, if you do this on your own, you want to make sure that your repositories are public. This is this repository came as an assignment from GitHub Classroom for my students, so it was already set up as public. We want to go into settings. And now there is a left-handed uh, or a menu on the left-hand side. Click on pages and we have GitHub pages. Now, notice the first sentence, Git GitHub Pages is designed to host your personal organization or project pages from a GitHub repository. This is a convenience. It, it's not recommended for true production of a business site or so on or your personal journal outside of the educational institution, but this is a great way to show off your work without dealing with purchasing domain names, purchasing hosting, and 
paying for all those services. This is a quick way to do this. So that's why I do this with my students all the time. So if you want to get more information, right click on that link, that hyperlink, open up the link to GitHub Pages and you could do a little research here about what exactly GitHub Pages is. We're going to do the quick version here. We're gonna come back down and notice source. Where are we sourcing uh, or where is our source code? And if we pull this down, we want our source code to be pulled off of the main branch and the root directory of the main branch. So that is not the root directory of AWS. It's the root directory of the main branch. And that's it. We're going to leave choose theme alone. We're going to save that. And now take a look here. It's once you hit save, it says your site is ready to be published at this is a completely different website from the website of your GitHub repository. Take a look up top here. This is your GitHub repo. Notice it starts with github.com backslash organization and then the project. This is directly from the organization and then github.io and then the project name. So this is a separate website and this is the site where we're going to be publishing. Now, one final thing I would recommend you do that right click on this and hit copy link address. And let's go back to the beginning. And you have an about section over here on the right hand side, just to the right of the green code button. And there's that little settings piece there. So let's click on that settings and in the website, paste that GitHub pages website here, save changes. And notice now when you open up your repo, we're going to have the GitHub Pages website link right here. So it's handy to have. Now, we're gonna test this momentarily. Sometimes it takes a little longer for this to actually work, so you may wanna give it five, 10, 15 minutes, but let's check it out. Let's right click on this and open link in new tab. And let's see if it's working yet. And there's our project. This is the site that you want to show uh, potential employers, college admissions officers, friends and family show this off. This is this this is now live on the internet. You could copy this to your phone, show it, show your project on the phone, copy it to the jumbotron in your house on your big screen, and show it there. So this is where you show it off. So congratulations, you have now officially published your project, and this is how we will publish all of your projects going forward in the future. So you wanna keep this one, this is a utility, how to push up our work from GitHub Pages. So a little recap here one more time, you wanna make sure that the work from Cloud9 is pushed up properly with Git status, add, commit, and push. Then once we have those source files in your repo, now go to settings, Turn on pages, choose the main branch or the branch you're working on and hit save. And it is as simple as that. So here's our page. Congratulations, everyone. You have now wrapped up your first walkthrough, or at least my students have. You're gonna be moving on to a freelance project that uses this structure, but now it's gonna be all about you and your photos and your colors and your styles. To, so. Have fun with that. I want to thank you for hanging out with us for these 12 lessons, and we will see you in the next ones.